Hi, my name is Pascal, and I'm currently studying songwriting at Los Angeles College of Music. So for this month, I thought I would take you along on a little vlog of my experience at the school and just my life here going to LACM. So I actually live in downtown LA, so I get up and I drive to Pasadena um, because campus is in Pasadena. I kind of like it because I get some of the action of living in LA and some of the calm and quiet of going to Pasadena and like meeting people from Pasadena and meeting people from LA is also really exciting. And let's be honest, it all still kind of feels like LA. So this quarter for my private lesson, I got the honor of working with Cassia Livingston, um, who's written for Britney Spears, the Pussycat Dolls, among many others. Um, so that was really fun, and I actually got the chance to talk to Cassia about my experience and her experience at the school. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, how are you? I'm good, Pascal. How are you doing? Good. So what do you love about working for LACM? Um, one thing I noticed uh, when I got to LACM is that the faculty and the administration, in addition to just being really lovely people that are very caring for students, have both a great professional background and also are really fantastic at kind of curating a curriculum that's great for people that want to be industry professionals. And so they're bringing their real world experience and their expertise and their caring for students to the table. And I've just found time and time again that I recognize people that are walking the halls. I'm already a fan of them. And then, of course, one of the most crucial things is the, the student body. And I've just found so much talent at LACM. It's competitive with any other music program that I've ever experienced, ones that I've attended. And uh, I just feel like I'm watching the next generation of today's rising stars. But every time I'm on a campus, every time I'm interacting with students over Zoom, it's really exciting to see them at the very beginning uh, of what I know are going to be fantastic careers. What was your favorite collaboration that you ever participated in? That is a really difficult question because I feel like whenever I start trying to count all the lovely people that I've met and worked with in the industry, I, I don't stop. Like it, it, the yeah. list is too large. Um, I've had some wonderful long-term collaborations where I really focused on one team or one partner. And then I've had a lot of ones that are sporadic where people are coming from other countries to, you know, hit kind of intense pockets of working for a couple weeks and then they go back home. There's really too many to name, but some of my favorites have been my lovely friend uh, Robert Palmer, who was one of the first people that I met in the industry. It's just a godsend having someone like him cross my path. And then I really loved some visiting uh, producing teams, like this one in particular that's called Tortuga from Sweden. Uh, every time we have gotten together, we just created what felt magical uh, to me. And once I start naming, I could go on and on, but um, it's just, I feel so fortunate because even though sometimes I've gotten together with people and it hasn't been like the perfect music chemistry to create songs, it's just added another layer of wonderful friends that I've known in the industry. So it's, it's made me really appreciate having all these great opportunities. These next two last two questions are more personal. So what was your first impression of me when we met? <laughs> um, I, I felt like you were kind and I felt like you were very like down to earth and personable, which to me is, is a category that I, or a quality that I feel like many other successful people have is that you can really talk to them and that kind of lends well to them being able to collaborate with other people. And then of course, the minute I started hearing your music, it was stuck inside my head even after our lesson was over for the day. So I just, uh, I love that combination in particular of someone who is very humble and unassuming. And then when they unleash what they can do musically, it, it really blows your mind. How have you seen me develop as an artist over the course of this quarter? 
I feel like with you and with many other students, all the qualities that you need are, are already contained inside you. It's just a matter of kind of building a platform of confidence. And one of my favorite things to do with students at LACM is just kind of be as awkward and kind of self-conscious as I am, an ambassador or representative of the industry to try to say, it comes in all shapes and sizes and you can you still have the opportunity to pursue your dreams and, and possibly be successful. And so I think it's just a matter of getting that sort of more comfortable relationship with a student, especially in your case, where you feel comfortable showing me your songs and what you can do. And it's more of just bringing what's inside to the outside and encouraging someone to show that to the world. You, you don't need me to teach you how to write songs. Obviously, you, you've had that already. But I'm hoping I can kind of show that this is worth it. It's worth giving it a shot and taking the talent that you have and putting it out there, taking a risk on yourself. So thank you so much. You're welcome, Pascal. Another thing I did this quarter was uh, present my image and branding plan for my music business class. Um, that's sort of about like what your brand and image is going to be as an artist. And it was just really exciting thinking about those things and sort of solidifying what I wanted to stand for and presenting that to my peers. My personal style, I have like alternative colorful style, bandana, a symbol of rebellion, kind of like a warrior for peace. Another really exciting thing I did this quarter was go on field trips to studios. We went to Killingsworth Studios, uh, run by Thomas Costanza, who uh, works with a lot of really great people that I have come to love. Um, like a lot of the drag queens on RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, he has worked with Macklemore. Um, and it was just so exciting to see what he does and see his work on advertising and just learn that there's not just one way of making a living in the music industry and that you can be doing lots of different things. And I just found it really exciting. Okay, the best advice well, not the best, probably one of the top three best advice lines I've ever received is from Sam Hollander. And I live by it every day, so don't forget it. Ready? Okay. Bury the dead. Bury the dead. Write a song. If it's not great, bury the dead. It is the greatest, <laughs> and Fitz from Fitz in the Tantrums told him that. Oh really? Yeah, and I think it's the greatest thing ever because I used to do the same thing. Like I used to write a sync. Why isn't this fucking thing getting synced? Why isn't it getting synced? Hollywood Records bought me a recording machine, and um, I uh, was writing a song a week with drums, bass, guitar, everything, and eighty percent of it was so god awful. But it got me to the point where I was breaking through that wall where it's like. I don't know what I'm going to write about. What am I doing? Blah, blah, blah. Fuck it. I got to write something. I got to do it. And that's when I got really good at crafting songs quickly. Um, so, you know, I think everyone should do that. Another really exciting field trip we did was go to Stone's Thorough Records, um, run by the artist called Peanut Butter Wolf. What are you excited about, Zoe? Um, I hope Anderson <laughs> Pack is in this building right now. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just so amazing to meet all the people that work there and get a glimpse of what they do. And we all got a free t-shirt or a vinyl record, which was just an added bonus. <laughs> I wonder what happened. <laughs> Actually, Egyptian Lover, he would have backwards messages on his stuff. He was, oh, really? He was a rapper in the 80s. I just had lunch with him yesterday. He's like, he was my idol kind of growing up, or one of many. But yeah, when I was 15, I went to go see him perform, and it was sold out. But my mom dropped me off at the spot, and you know, there were no cell phones back then, so I had to wait until like, the show was over and listen to it from outside. But yeah, he had the backwards messages, too. That's awesome. So every quarter, students work towards having a showcase at the end of the quarter um, in which you present your new songs and like what you've been working on. And this quarter was really intense because I had my industry showcase um, and I actually played for a panel of um, people from the industry 
and my showcase went really well. And um, actually, I was really honored because the senior A&R of BMG Music Publishing was there, and he said um, my song was top 40 material, which really made me so happy. Baby, it's okay if you're feeling sad. you know, right now. I really love it. Um, I love the fact that you've taken, um, a lot of people like songwriters, we all have a stance when it comes to what we'll write about. I love that you took a stance about writing um, with regard to mental health. Like, that's so important and you made it so cool and so, um, such a nice vibe, but you're actually talking about something very serious. And the song that you had when you were telling your friend that you would never let them down, you'll always have their back. To be able to put that into song and it not sound corny is very difficult. And so you did a really good job with that. So I just wanted to say I love your whole vibe and style and I love your stance when it comes to what you choose to talk about um, as a songwriter. Just to start off, I love the, the look off the back of what Carmen said. I'm just super now and cool. And I think out of all of the songs played at this showcase, the, the hook and winner of all the choruses is down. I mean, I think that, that that hook was really on par with anything you'd hear on Top 40 Pop Radio. Um, and, I, you know, you sung it really well, and it was accompanied by the rest of the songs. But just, you know, on, his, on its own, um, a lot of the times my job is uh, in order to be able to sign someone or in order to be able to take on a project and invest on it, you kind of have to hear a hit and a hook at a certain point in one song, or else you just can't commit to them. And it's like, oh, like all of this is great and I love this artist, but where is that thing to point to? And that's kind of a consistent thing that I face looking for. And you just totally nailed it with down in that chorus. Um, so well done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching this and allowing me to give you a little glimpse into what I do on a daily basis and um, where I'm heading with my career. I'm super excited for this year going forward. And let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>